Hello there, Survivor Idrai back again, so taking you through more weapons of Chernobus. This is part 4 of my series, and there'll be a link in the top right hand corner to the prettiest of all these videos. I also provide links at the end of this video. So today we are going through the assault rifles, starting with the M4-A1 or the M4A1 carbine, then onto the various AK variants, the KA-M which is the AKM, next is the KA-101 or the AK-101, the KA-74 or the AK-74 as it's commonly known, and lastly the KA-74 small variant, the KAS-74U which is of course the AKS-74U. As always, I was going for the attachments of each weapon. In this case though, there will be not much infected killing, because every single one of these weapons are lethal with one hit kills. So let's go back to our shooting range and start on putting these assault rifles through the paces, starting with the M4. The M4-A1 is the famous M4 carbine, seeing service all across the United States Armed Forces. It replaced the M16 as the primary weapon for the infantry. As in real life, a very customable weapon, and as you can see here, has varied attachments, which can be found all around Chernobyl in any military camp or airfields, much like the rest of these weapons on this list. It is a very rare weapon and it's a prized possession of many a survivor. Chambered in 5.56 by 45, as most of these assault weapons will be. All the magazines will take 30 rounds. So let's try this weapon and see what the results are like. A composed weapon with a small kick, but quite manageable even with no added attachments. The iron sights are good for a standard weapon, but of course can be improved upon, with most of the choices of any weapon in Chernobyl. First we have the M4 carry handle optics, a slight improvement on the standard iron sights. Nothing special. As wrong with most sights, it's personal preference. Next we have the classic ATOG scope. This is the only one that provides that actual to your shot, about 8% improvement. And of course, it also provides that all improvement important zoom. A personal favourite. Combat sights next, which need a battery for the red dot. But as I can see, it's fine without it. Nice sight for a bit more close combat action. Having a good field of view around the site to look for targets. No zoom on this one though. Backup iron sights are the few options I prefer when it comes to the basic iron sight choices. Either the default or the carry handle ones. I feel more comfortable with this sight personally, but as I said before, it's all about personal preference. The Bracker sights have a nice Field of view, much like combat sites. But do need that battery for that red dot. I personally prefer the combat sites, but it's a nice solid alternative. Lastly, the RVN sight, another close range sight. The M4 is always a nice weapon in that 100 meter range and is valued for its decent damage and good hanging. and this site provides an excellent field of view. Now we can get to the numerous attachments that can be put on this weapon. There are three handguards. Each give you a percentage improvement on accuracy and control. The weakest is the Palmer handguard at 6%. Then onto the rail guard, which is at 8%, but of course this can have a flashlight attached to it. Finally, we have the MP handguard, providing the biggest improvement at 10%. It is a similar story for butt stocks. First we have the CQB, which improves your accuracy by 10%, but also gives you a small agility buff when moving the weapon around. Then we go to the telescopic stock at 13%, and the archery, the MP butt stock at 16%. Combine these items for a significant help when shooting. Muzzles, you get the standard suppressor, or you can use the improvised suppressor, as I have talked about in my last video. You can also attach the bayonet, and here it is in action. It's quite weak, but it's an effective tool for dispatching the affected. But it is silent, and of course, it gives you the added advantage of keeping your weapon in your hands. 
So let's see how this affects accuracy. Here we are, she's in the ACOG, she's doing the ACOG stock scope at 100 meters. This shows, query, the kick effect. Now, let's add the best stock. A bit yes kick, and we can control the weapon a bit better now. So let's add the best handguard available. Now it's a dramatic difference, much more manageable. And we can also add the suppressor, which adds, of course, that muted sound and a slight accuracy increase. Even rapid fire is possible in short bursts. So finding these attachments can make a difference to your accuracy. KA-M, which is the AKM, and is the most powerful assault rifle in the game currently. Seen throughout the world as the iconic Kyashnikov rifle, designed by Mikhail Kyashnikov. Widespread use over all the Soviet army from 1959 onwards. It's chambered in 7.62 by 39mm. This is a powerful gun with a no notable kick at long range. Here we are, just taking a few shots and you can see it has a kick. This weapon has three optics available, so let's start there with a PS0-1 scope. This zoom scope is high effective and can make this gun into a very good shooter at range due to the high calibre of the bullet and the power of this weapon. Okay, again you can see that big kick. Next is the close range Cobra sight. No zoom on this one, but just gives you a nice guide for close range combat. Lastly, we have the 1PN51 scope. This chunky scope is actually a night sight, and obviously very rare, needing a 9 volt battery to work. First, we need some night. Ah, there we go. Now as you can clearly see, there's a zoom, and you can see everything with this scope. That's a massive advantage at night, and rest assured you can get the drop on the enemy. Like the M4, there are numerous attachments to help improve the accuracy and control of this weapon. First up, the handguards. The wooden and the Palmer handguards both provide 10% accuracy, while the railway guard is yes at 6%. But of course, the eyes you detach that vital flashlight. While the stocks, the polymer and the folding both provide 10% improvement. But the wooden provides 13% improvement. Of course, you can add a bayonet, a suppressor or improvised suppressor. So let's get to some testing. Starting off with no attachments using this PSO scope. 100 meters range, you can see the, the kick. Okay, let's try it, combat this with a wooden stock. Again, using the best one of the attachments. Not as violent movement, but still noticeable. Now we can add a handguard. It still jumps a fair bit, and I would say the M4 is more controlled, but it's nowhere near as powerful. But even if we have the suppressor, you now see a much more controlled weapon. Now onto the KA-101, or the AK-101, designed for more of the expert market and using the more familiar 5.56x45mm 5 .5 round, which is of course the same as the M4. It's not as powerful as the KA-M, but still a force to be reckoned with. With less kick than the previous assault weapon, it is a bit easier to manage. There are four optics available to this weapon. They're the same as the K8-M, but we have an addition of one more. The P1-87 scope. This scope is bulky and blocks your entire view, so take that into account when picking this scope up. So as I attach them to all the same and provide the same improvements, Let's go straight into the shooting and see how the attachments affect this weapon. As you can see, that traditional AK kick is query there. So let's add the book stock first. Small improvement as before.
I hope. Query some effective. Want to be on this guide after all. Let's just quickly dispatch them. Next, we have added the handgun. And as you can see, there's a big difference now. Now with the AK fully equipped and suppressed. It is now a evil, accurate, silent killer. The KA-74, which is the AK-74, was made to replace the aging AKM and, and is still used for the present day. It takes a slightly smaller round at 5.54 by 39. The attachments are identical again to the AK-101, we can go straight into the 100m mark and start sending down some fire down that range using that P1-87 scope again. As always, without attachments, this weapon will kick a fair bit. So as we've done before, let's add the buttstock. Of course, there's a slight improvement, so I'll add the handguard as well. These two items on any rifle make a huge difference, as you can see. And remember we add that suppressor, we can really contain that kick. Lastly, we have the KAS-74U, which is a small, compact version of the KA-74. The AKS-74, as it was known, was made to provide a small, lighter alternative to your standard AKs. With rest attachments on this weapon, the only options being a buttstock and the suppressors, as also this weapon cannot have a bayonet. The also has no optics available, so you get what you're pretty much given. So, but don't dismiss this small weapon, as it's a favourite backup weapon for our snipers. It fits nicely in a 6x3 SWAT in your backpack, instead of the larger 8x3 by the, for the other AKs. As always, when you add attachments to this weapon, you can make it a viable backup weapon for any survivor. It's pretty easy to control, even on 4 auto. And that was the last weapon from the assault rifles. We shall now leave Turnus at B, but we know they'll be back to look at the more weapons we have here. Rumour has it some new pistols have been found, and we still nuked at the dedicated sniper rifles. So thank you again for watching, and always be careful out there.